a busy week. I have. Just got back from Cleveland. I head to Indiana tomorrow. Nice. We're doing Nick, the VR. Right, it's the VR, so it's TNT's VR broadcast, virtual reality broadcast. Stoke. So it, it's, been, fun. it's been a blast. We don't. The, we, no. the people you, watch wear it. Yeah. I was confused. Okay. I thought I was going to have to be on the sideline wearing right. the VR. You're like, it feels real. <laughs> no. No. Take them off because you're there. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, but it's been a blast. It's been all right. fun. Uh, Sarah, let's talk about the Cavs and their upcoming game three tonight. Sarah will see y'all on the street. She ain't going to say nothing to you. I'm just going to tell you that, people. She's so busy covering the Browns. I'm chasing after LeBron. Go. I'm chasing after her in Tribeca. People at home are not sure what that means. <laughs> but we as a family, we know. Yes, we know. All right, Sarah, we're going to do a quick pros and cons. Pros, LeBron James has averaged 35 points, 11 rebounds, and over 8 assists in a game. Cons, I've been told I don't have enough time to list all the cons. Sarah, are the Cavs too reliant on LeBron James? Is there a, another way to more emphatically say yes? I mean, right? I, it is unbelievable what this man has had to carry and the load that he's had to shoulder and you look at the fact that the Cavaliers at home lost the first game of course in the man manner in which they did but lost game two with LeBron James scoring 46 points or excuse me one game two by just three points that was Victor Oladipo in foul trouble not playing a lot of time so yeah absolutely and I think you knew that some of those role players might be question marks, the guys who haven't had playoff experience, but they have not given him anything. And, and some of the more reliable players like Kyle Korver, who played well, mm -hmm. but J.R. Smith, you're looking, is a guy who's a reliable, consistent player, and he, at times, could have been an X factor for this team. I'm concerned about Kevin Love's hand. I know they said that he's going to play. In game three, but I still think any time it comes to ligaments, that can be a concern for a player um, who, too, he's done well. He's done some things like rebounding. He's been effective for the Cavs, but he hasn't been scoring either. No. So I, I just, I, I'm concerned. I would never bet against LeBron. I am very concerned for this Cavaliers team. What was, what was going through your mind because you were at the game when you see not only do the Pacers nearly come all the way back, but on that last meaningful offensive possession, out of a timeout, not only is Kyle Korver on the court, which I don't understand when it's one defensive right. possession, but that's the lineup they chose to go with, but they can't execute a simple switch. And Victor Oladipo, the best player on the Indiana Pacers, has a wide open look to tie the game. What's going through your mind right there as he's getting the ball? not have gotten a better look than that. I like the idea they did a, yes. a small, small screen. Mm -hmm. I think that, mm -hmm. that worked well, and it was a good call by Nate McMillan. But the fact that the one guy who you want to take the ball out of his hands got the ball at the end. Got the ball in, in a clear, wide open look. On and the most simple action that exists in the NBA. It wasn't some Brad Stevens special, we're going to run three decoy screens, have a guy come. It was the guy with the ball. Doesn't even pass the ball, just takes the screen and dribbles exactly to where he wants. Like, to not be able to defend that, LeBron was LeBron was not focused on his 46 points after the game. He was focused on, he talked to Ali LaForce about that play. On top of the fact that it, the Cavs have not been a good defensive team all year, but these are also two, and, and Kyle Korver, I agree with you, questionable why he's on the floor because he's not one of your better defenders. But these are two guys that have been around the system. They understand how they mm -hmm. play. I mean, you've got J.R. Smith and, and Kyle Korver. Like, they should know what they're doing, and to turn around, to leave the ball, I, I just think that speaks volumes about where this team is at in their dysfunction, their miscommunication, and just guys not knowing where to be on the floor. Yes. Well, the depot said he was shocked that he was open. So I think he missed the shot because he was shocked that he was that open yeah. and said he'd love to get that look again. But it's the lack of sense of urgency. And LeBron is playing well, but they got so many players that are playing bad. Jordan Clarkson, George Hill, Kyle Korver. Like he had, he, he came back a little bit in game number two, but man, he had a horrific death in his family, his younger brother. He also hurt his foot. Tristan Thompson, man, you don't know when you're going to see him again. No. Like, I mean, he's, he buried up under the bench. He's I out think, of the rotation. Yeah, I think that they have put in Kendrick Perkins, who they have off the, yeah. off the G League team before they put him in. So, yes, we're confident in LeBron, but this is the first round. If they do make the NBA Finals, oh, man, LeBron will be exhausted. Well, like he, he, and he, play, like, he played 44 minutes in that first game. And the amount of... Um, Energy he had to spend on the defensive end because he had to take the head up, the one-on-one battle. Yes. Game two. Right. So do you have to, 
So, I mean, what, what do you do if you're if you're Ty Lue? You have to strike some sort of balance between 100% of the offense goes through LeBron James, and LeBron James is going to have to try to get the rest of his team into some sort of rhythm. How, how do you well, balance because those I think, two? And, and we saw at times in the early part of the season them running the offense as well through Kevin Love and him initiating some things off the post. I, I think the interesting thing, and, and Nate McMillan is a smart coach, and he's someone who's been around a lot. Years past, it was always turn LeBron into a score. We don't want him to have that facilitation mm -hmm. ability, also his ability to score, make the other players beat you. But allowed Le LeBron will get his as long as no one else gets theirs. And that's essentially what Indiana has done. Yeah. Said, okay, fine. If, if LeBron can put up 40 every game, great. But you got two other guys in that game, too, in, in double figures for the Cavs other than LeBron. That's not going to win you a series. Well, I'm going to talk about Kevin Love for a second because he's the only other player on this team that's an all-star. He's the only other player on this team that I think you should be able to rely on game in, game out. He's shooting 33% in the series. He's shooting less than 25% from two in this series like can't happen so they, they Kevin Love not only can it not happen it won't repeat itself for the entirety of the series now you're right he has a partially torn ligament in his thumb on his non-shooting hand now they're saying they're gonna be able to tape it up he should be good to go you see we will see how much that affects him I was worried I texted Chris the moment it happened I said I might involve some curse words I said did Kevin Love just break his bleeping thumb because the way he held his hand and I mean if it was a broken bone and he's done for the series well then or done for the playoffs now all of a sudden we have to look at everything else but Jenna your concern about could they be overusing LeBron like are they relying on him too much it is your only option. If you only have one life raft and the ship is sinking, that life raft, you're not worried about can it get to the can it get to land? You're just saying let's get on it and see how far we can go. He's their life raft. And it's the best life raft in the NBA. I still believe LeBron and LeBron alone can beat the Indiana Pacers. I know that sounds disrespectful to the Pacers. I promise it's not. It's just out of tremendous respect for him. I think we saw it in game two that LeBron and LeBron alone beat the Indiana Pacers closer than it should have been. And while 46 points we can't expect, it, could we expect 35 points and 10 assists instead of 46 and 5 assists? I think you can. I think but the other you, guys have I, to hit those shots, otherwise those aren't going to be assists. I will yeah, also say point. I think Indiana did not play well in Game 2. Oh, On absolutely. Top of Victor, it fell in the hands. So the foul trouble. I, I agree with LeBron being able to carry a team and get wins, but I think Indiana is a very good team. I think they feel like we lost by three on the road and did not even play close to our best basketball Missed a lot of shots that were very makeable shots. And I don't think who puts fear into you other than LeBron. I don't think Oladipo is scared of LeBron, but the rest of that roster on the Cavaliers team, this Indiana team feels like they can absolutely match up with. Mm -hmm. All right, Sarah, we'll see you a little bit later on in the show. Coming up, why draft one quarterback in the top five when you could draft two oh. quarterbacks in the top five? That's oh, it next. could be coming. First things first. I'd be so excited. Don't run up on Sarah if you check around the Whole Foods. Don't do it. it.